is relative. Nothing is absolute. Think this is my hand? Wrong. That is my foot. Think this is my arm? Wrong. That is my nose. Who are you to tell me that this is my arm and this is my foot? Raise your hand if you think I'm delusional. You're right, because I was. You see, did you see that I was hindered? Did you see that I was wrong? Did you see that I was harming myself, both mentally and physically? I mean, imagine having surgery on your, for your arm on your nose. Where are your fingers? I'm chained by my own hindrances and I'm not able to see the truth. When I was first given this topic, I thought, no worries, I'll smash this out in one night. But little did I know, I could not believe I was so naive, that I would struggle so much with this topic because though I knew a couple, you know, a couple absolute truths, such as we can't have round squares and everything will come to an end. My eyes did not open until a couple days ago. I saw that there is so much more to an absolute truth than just round squares and expiry dates on all things. And today, I will be focusing on absolute truth taught in the Dharma. I have learned from the Buddha that all teachings of the Dharma are like little jigsaw puzzles that fit together to lead us to enlightenment. Enlightenment that allows us to be able to understand and see and comprehend what the absolute truths of the universe are. The absolute truths are the foundations of the Buddhist teaching and they are the foundations of our school. I would like all of you to close your eyes and imagine a world where people live with no absolute truths. People live a life of hypocrisy in a world of a paradox. They are so wrapped up in the idea that everybody has their own unique truth, that everybody has their own relative truth and there is no such thing as a relative truth. No such thing as a relative wrong. They are so insistent on this, but they cannot see that they are hindered. Because in their world, they believe in where they believe there is no absolute truth. If you think about it, if there is a world with no absolute truth, is that not an absolute truth within, its, within itself? By living their lives this way, they are able to feed their own hatred by tw twisting ideas and actions to serve their own selfish needs in a way that is clearly wrong and immoral to us, but relative to them, they could be a saint. Now, I haven't mentioned Sotho and Torpo yet, but that's my second hindrance. And you might be wondering, how does it fit in to this topic? Have you ever noticed that it is so much harder to forgive someone than to hate them? Did you know that this is driven by our unwillingness to cut off and our unwillingness to put in the effort to fight our, our laziness, to fight our complicity. The hindrances, specifically sloth and torpor and ill will, are the foundations of the absolute truth, the absolutely wrong truth. If there is no such thing as an absolute, absolute truth, there is no such thing as an absolute wrong. The world that they would be living in is the world of a dystopia, but to them, it could be a world of a utopia. Please open your eyes. If the seeds of wisdom have not been planted, we would have no understanding of the world around us. But how, and we will be like goldfish, swimming round and round in a bowl with no meaning. But how do we find this meaning? We can combat it, the ill will with our light of metta. We can out, we can out, 